Oh, Lord. We, we all have to trust God. I mean, we have earthquakes. Anyway. Earthquake, got the war, got the, got, you know, same-sex marriages now. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you know, and uh, I ain't against it. If that's what they, they want to do, fine. You know, I ain't mad at no judge. I ain't vote for none of them. I, I told don't retain none of them. Okay, uh, y'all make sure y'all vote on uh, next month. <laughs> but, um, but, but what I'm saying, those are signs of the time. That's, the Bible tells us this stuff is going to happen. So this is not surprising us, but it is letting us know, see, some, some things going to get narrow and narrower, narrow, narrower. You know what I'm trying to say, don't you? And, and uh, we got to, see, we, 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 we can't, oh, this is not anti, but we can't put our confidence in the government. We can't trust the government. We can't, the government, we can't trust we can't trust we can't trust anybody but God. And we're gonna have to put we're gonna have to really strap down and like God, I'm trusting you. Either this stuff is true or it's not. And we got we have episode after episode. God brought millions, millions to a desert, millions. And there was not one feeble one among them. And the Jordan didn't even wear out. Yeah, God, that's God, that's on God's resume. The God that we were just singing about and praising, I hope you got your praise on, because you want to release some of that. Yes. So I want to talk to you a little bit about, about trusting God again. And, um, you know, we kind of got, got off last week. But um, I was talking about trusting God with your assignment. How many of you know each one of us has a specific and special uh, assignment from God? And when I say assignment, you know, everybody's not going to Africa or nothing, but... It's, it's, his, it's his plan and purpose for your life. None of us are here by accident. And I use this term because my pastor, years ago, he was talking to a bunch of us and he said, okay, God calls you, I get that, but what did he call you for? See, everybody, everybody's not even a public on the platform minister. Yeah, everybody's, everybody gift, you're still a minister, but your gift, everybody's gifting is different. Everybody's different, different. So he said, he said, what did he call you for? And where did he call you to do it at? And he said, when did he call you to do it? Because, see, one of the things we have to trust God with is the timing. We have to trust him with the timing because a lot of times, I know I've been guilty of this, trying to, trying to want something to happen and make something happen, and it's not time for it because I'm not ready. Not that God's not ready. I'm not ready. So we talked a little bit about that, and then we, um, we said that, um, that the will of God is progressive, right? That's what we talked about last week. And I said, that I'm going to rehearse some things right quick. We said that God doesn't show you the full scope of your assignment in one little prayer session. <laughs> he, you, to discover it and to be successful in the assignment, it requires a continual exchange with him. See, God wants a relationship, not some revival event. You know, now don't get me wrong, I think fasting is wonderful. We do 21 fasts every year, but God doesn't, see, so that's an event for, for some. It's an event. Well, I'm going to fast for 21 days. Okay, what about the rest of the 330 uh, something? So but that can become an event. But see, God doesn't want an event, He wants a relationship, a constant, continual exchange. He'll give you His strength for your weakness. He gives us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He talked about that. So, so we, we want to we wanna make sure that we, uh, we do that. So the will of God. Now, I said this too. You cannot go, you can go anywhere you want to in God if you're willing to take small steps. What do I mean by that? Because God doesn't show you everything. But if you take the step he gives you and you, and you take it, then that determines what he reveals to you next time. Because he, I said sometimes, you know, God will give us a sentence, we turn that into a paragraph. Or he gives us a paragraph, we turn it into a whole chapter. And God said, I didn't say all of that. I didn't say all of that. He, you know, he said, you take a step, when you take that step, now, now, what you, this step I just took determines what God's going to tell me next, where he's going to take me next. But if I don't take this one, I don't qualify for more. So it's progressive, all right? Okay. And then we said this, that um, it's not hard to know the will of God, but it does take effort. And he wants you to know why you're here. 
he wants you to know why you're here. Now, I want to go back to Romans 12. And I want to deal with some things. Hallelujah. How many of you ready? Okay, verse 1. Let's do 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a what kind of sacrifice? Living. What kind of sacrifice? Living. living sacrifice. So a sacrifice is living squirms, doesn't it? And it moves and squirms around. Can you imagine putting a sacrifice on the altar that's still a, a, a chicken that's still alive? What are you going to have to do to that, that, that sacrifice? You're going to have to tie it down. And so God is saying, he said, I want you to present your body a living sacrifice. I'll mention that in a minute. Holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Watch this. That's turned into something else. By the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Is there anybody in here tonight? I'm sure they are. But how many of you in here tonight, you, you want the good, acceptable, and even the perfect will of God for your life? So this here lets us know that it's available. And God wants you to know it more than you want to know it. God is so good, man. And he wants you to find out what his uh, plan for your life is. The first stage of finding out what the plan, his plan for my life is becoming a living sacrifice. Now, I want to take a little, not a little detour, but for the sake of people. So you may be in here and, and find the will of God for my life. It may be mysterious to you. It doesn't have to be. Listen. God wants you to know it more than you want to know it. So he's not going to make it hard for you to find out. Okay. Thank you for that grunt. <laughs> um, I want to, okay, let me do this. How do I want to do this? I'm going to make this simple. Because sometimes it's intimidating um, to people. Like, what, Pastor? I want to know the will of God. What, what should I do? Should I, should, I, should I have somebody read my palm or, or call that number? Or, I don't know. They still have them numbers you can call? I know Cleo got put out of business for a long time ago. <laughs> but um, it becomes intimidating. The first thing he says, he says, present yourself a living sacrifice. Well, the first thing I want to say about this is, first of all, God looks at and listens to your heart. God, God looks at and listens to your heart. Now, Sunday, I made a phrase. I said, I said, I said, <laughs> remember I said, I said, we didn't quit lying to ourselves by a lot of stuff there. Remember we said that? Okay. So, so God looks and listens to my heart. So, so he knows who really desires him. And, and he knows everything I do toward him I can be doing this, but he knows what's really, what I, he, he, he hears me, but he knows what I'm really preaching. So he knows who's really desiring him. First of all, I start with the desire. God, I want to know what the will of God is for my life. That's where it starts. It starts with the desire. And so, you know, sometimes people say that, but they need to quit lying to themselves about, I really want to know what the will of God is. Because, and, and that's something between them and God, but he's not keeping it from me. And the first thing he says is become, he says, a living sacrifice. And that just means that, that God says, you know, avail yourself to me. Now, I said a living sacrifice because now a, a live chicken, you're going to have to keep, keep putting that thing. You stay down here. You have to tie it down. Well, see, as a living sacrifice, he didn't say dead sacrifice. But see, a living sacrifice, us, it's not I'm going to do this on Wednesday and I'll be fine the rest of my life. No, because see, it's living, right? So the living sacrifice gonna keep trying to crawl off that altar. And so I'm gonna have to tell me, no, get back in the altar. We're not going there. See, the longer, you, okay, the saints, listen, the longer you've been saved, the, long, the longer you're saved, 
I don't care how long you've been saved, the flesh never gets better. You understand what I just said? I've been saved 15 years, so now my flesh is better. No, it ain't. The flesh, the flesh doesn't grow better. That's why you got to keep it a living sacrifice. You got to keep bringing that joker back. You can be saved 20 years, and you can get up and go smoke a crack pipe right after prayer. That's right. Because the, because the flesh, that's why he said, you owe nothing to the flesh. He said, he said make no provision for it. because It doesn't get better because you've been in church a long time. That joker, you know, mm, we ain't going to even talk about it. You know, I'm like, you're like, you, you just minding your business, loving Jesus. Loving Jesus. And all of a sudden, wow, oh, oh, where did that come from? Ain't been tempted with that for 16 years. And all of a sudden, that flesh don't get better because you've been saved a long time. And that joker, will, that joker will crawl right off that altar as soon as he get a chance. You see Susie Sue over there? I ain't seen her in 16 years. Shoot, let me get off the altar for a minute. The flesh. See, that's why. It's, <laughs> see, the flesh, you can't expose it. You can't. That joker will crawl off, and, and, it will, and it will convince you. Oh, you can handle this now. Oh, you can handle this. Oh, you can you can you can hang out with her. Look, y'all ain't gonna do nothing. Y'all just, just y'all ain't gonna do nothing. Y'all just y'all just gonna embrace that flesh. That flesh like you can give me an embrace if you want to. You 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 know I'm gonna go with this, don't you? That's what the flesh says. And then the mind's like, I know, man, but I'm ready to repent it. But let's. Okay, I didn't mean to go quite off like that. But see, that's what you need to tell people sometimes. Tell them, I know you've been saved, baby, but oh, I'm past that now. Yeah, you might be past it, but your flesh ain't. And watch this. Your flesh got a serious memory bank. Don't it? It know how to do all. Okay, let me stop. All right. Man, shoot. You got a memory bank, man. The flesh doesn't, the flesh doesn't grow. In grace. That's why a lot of people get in trouble. Oh, I can handle this now. I remember one thing in the Okay. So your assignment is revealed progressively. <laughs> okay. Now go to Romans 8.28. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to minister this out of the Amplified. But yeah, y'all tell people to think, I can do this now. No, you tell them your flesh can't. You, you know what? Your, your flesh already told you what you can do with this. It already told you. That's how you got there. I need to put that on. I need to put that on TV or something. Okay, Romans 8, 28. I'm going to get back to my message now. <laughs> That's why I said living sacrifice. So, so it's so easy to to uh not so easy but um it starts out desiring him now you know when you get older you have experience and how I many you know hindsight is always what 2020 right and it's good and 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 people that have some experience how many of you i was thinking about this how many of you you've been saved a while and there's some things you are so glad you're so glad that you made a decision to not conform to the world and you're so glad you started, you made a move that said, I'm going to change this. And, and it, maybe it was hard. Maybe people say, oh, come on, you can't be that religious. You don't have to give it all of that. But, but you persevered anyway. And now you way past that. And you are so glad that you changed your lifestyle. You know, I, I was thinking about that. I'm like, Golly, I mean, I, I mean, I was telling Deb, I said, what if all this ain't true about going to heaven and the other? I said, shoot, my life is still so much better. <laughs> if it ain't true, I'm glad I live this way. I'm serious. If it ain't true, then fine. I don't want to go back to no, uh, no, no Jack Daniel and, and no screwdrivers. I don't want to go back to that. I'm good. I like this is good. But it is true. But. 
But we look back, and I look back, I'm like, man, I'm so glad. I'm so glad I decided to change my life and live this way with, with one woman. You know, just one. Just one. No spare ribs, just one. <laughs> I let the spare ribs go. And, and I'm, so glad, I'm so glad I raised my kids according to the word, even though we were persecuted, man. Why? You can't be teaching it. You can't be. Yeah, I'm so glad I didn't listen. I'm so glad I thought it. Say, we, we, we found out how, what the Bible says about how to manage our money. I'm so glad that the Bible said, you know, learn contentment. And then if you discipline yourself to do what you need to do when you need to do it, the day will come you can do what you want to do when you want to do it. That's in the Bible. It just says it's different. And so I'm so glad. I'm so glad I learned. Now what were we just doing? I'm so glad I learned how to praise through. Through stuff. I'm so glad I learned that I don't, don't let your feelings and emotions control you. Let that word control you. I'm so glad. I got, we got, we just got, we, we just lost our mind on the Bible. I'm so glad now. Going through it though, it was like, huh, okay. Yeah, I'm so glad. But, but looking back now, I'm so glad that we follow the direction, even if we thought it was God. We followed, and he, he took us step. Now, we weren't perfect, because a lot of things, I don't have time to tell you all that. I ain't got time to tell you about the good stuff. <laughs> but I'm so glad that we, we took steps. And now looking back, I'm like, man, God was all up on, God was all in this. Wow. And God makes you look so smart. I'm serious. And if, I'm so glad, man. I'm so glad I chose to, to, to go all the way, all the way with God. All the way with God. I'm so glad I decided I don't care what people think. I never forget I was in the, I was in London. No, I was in Nigeria. I don't know where I was. I was overseas, and there's a bunch of Muslims, and and you know in the, in the waiting area, in the waiting area, and 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 you know they were just talking and whatnot, and you know I'm just chilling, and all of a sudden I guess the, the clock hit a certain hour. They was all on the floor. They all put a little thing out, put a thing on, and, and whatever they were saying. And I'm like, shoot. I'm like, I got my baseball cap. <laughs> you know, I mean, but they, there was no shame. <laughs> there was no shame. And I'm like, I'm like, that's no shame. Right now, I don't care what people think about my, me and my Jesus. This personal. They don't know. They weren't there. They don't know. They don't know what he's done for me. They don't know what he's done for they, they don't know. So I don't care what they think. Their opinion means zip over me. I can care less. Care less. Say what you want to say. I know him. But myself. You listening to me? And so now, that's why I, I, I and so we commit our life to helping people Know him, you know. You don't have to know him like we know him, but just give him a chance. Just give him a chance. And what? In, in everything, the Bible said, acknowledge him in how many ways? Oh. All your ways. That stuff you sitting on, still trying to figure out, and you wouldn't take it to God yet. And he's like, no, no, I, I made that. I invented that, and I know how it works for this model. That would be you. So I'm so glad I sold out and lost my mind for Jesus. And so I encourage all of you, just sell out, lose your mind for Jesus, and just, and I'll tell you what, you better be look back, you need a high power telescope to see how, much, how different life is and life was and can be. And just go all out. What if I make a mistake? Look, you're going to make plenty. Just make your mistakes. Now I'm going to show you something that, no, Sunday, man, I can't wait to, uh, but, but remember we talked about uh, how stuff don't work in the nest Sunday. Y'all remember that? Yeah. I think this Sunday I'm going to talk, talk about what keep people in the nest from even trying. So we're going to get some folks out the nest. I'm going to kick some folks out the nest Sunday. <laughs> we're going to push them over. Okay. Now, um, Romans 8.28. I'm going to use the Amplifier because there's a couple words in here I want to uh, use. 8.28. Y'all know that. How many of y'all know it? that's scripture by heart? All things work together for good and perfect. Okay, now look up. We are assured and know 
that God being a partner in their labor. Let me ask you something. If God is a, your partner in what you're doing, whatever your labor is, can you fail? Huh? Really? We are assured and know. So Paul said, we, we, we are absolutely confident and know that God is my partner in my labor, whatever my labor is. Labor, whatever, trying to get something done. So we are assured and know that God being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan. That's your assignment. For good. To and for those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose. Glory to God. God is my partner. Glory to God. You can't, I, can't, I can't forget that. When I'm... I just, I just had a, a good friend of mine I just, just spoke, spoke to it. Well, I spoke to her, her wife. He's in Africa. He just just got to Africa. But she she had called me. She's had a miracle. I mean, a bona fide, hallelujah, got to tell somebody miracle. Because God was their partner. Monday, it looked like bankruptcy. Wednesday, it's all good. I mean, all good. Two days. Because God was their partner. Now, they were a little shaking on Monday. You know, sometimes you, whoa. You ever get one of those? Yeah, whoa, I didn't see that coming. If I saw it coming, I could have ducked, but I didn't see that coming. But he got a miracle today. I'm going to ask you this question again. If God is our partner... What are we going to do? How can we fail if God is our partner? And then he goes on to say, all things work together and are fitting together into a plan. For what? For what? For good. So, Pastor, you're telling me that God is my partner. If, if I have God as my partner, everything that's going on in my life can work together for my good. That's what I'm telling you. Now here's the, here's, here's the line. When we love God and are, are committed to being in his will. This is going back to what Romans 12 is talking about. When we're committed to being in the center of his will. God commits to us to be our partner. And we can be with absolute certainty absolute certainty that whatever he's my partner in it's going to work out it's going to work into my plan whatever his will is for my life it's going to work out in work out for my good I'm going to benefit from it some way somehow I don't understand it but because God is my partner because I love him and I'm in his will now I'm saying all this because what you want to do, what we want to do is, we want to find out the will of God for our lives. I'm telling you, we, in the will of God, in, in our plan, in the plan of God, in the purpose of God, is everything, I can't fail in his will, in his plan, and with him as my partner. So I want to find out, I want to desire, I want to talk to God about it. I want to do, I want to take the, if I only have one step, just do the one step and stay with that until you get another step. But in his will, in his, in the center of his will, it's my surety. It's my certainty. It's my no doubt about it. God got me. Man, I don't know if you, I mean, this is, this is when I know God got me. This is when I know I cannot fail. Well, look all around you, friendly. I know, but God has got a lot to work in my plan now. The will of God is the safest place in the world. If you're here tonight 
and you don't know the will of God for your life. You, you don't know. Please, just, you know, please, please, begin to just ask God, show me what your will is for my life. See, when, you, when you're in the will of God, you get to know him in ways that you can't know him when you're out of his will. It's the safest place in your life. It's the safest place. It's the safest place. And that's why he talks about in Romans 12, be not conformed to this will, word, word huh? be not conformed to this world but conformed to his will. <laughs> being in the center of his will is where, I, being in the center of his will is, only, is the only place I can be absolutely certain this is going to work out for my good. See, a lot of times things happen and we say, oh, well, this is going to work out for my good. It will if you're in his will because he, he has to do that. He has to perform his good pleasure when you're in his will, not just your will. That's why I said living sacrifice. A living sacrifice has nothing to say about anything. I'm saying, God here, I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. And so when God speaks to me, I don't, you know, I don't negotiate with him. I don't debate. It's like, well, you know, I would, but no. No, see now I'm just I just stepped outside of his will, but but if I recognize that he's 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 he bringing me to a place, and I step into that place, then all things work. Hey, Pastor, so is it? You mean tell me all your problems stop? No, 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 they increase. Yes, you will get attacked. Yes, you will get persecuted. Yes. You will be you will, you you'll be talked about. Yes, you you'll have to endure some pain. Yes, but one thing about it, see, I can control. Watch this now. I control whether I get out of the will of God or not. I control that. Man, I'm about to run. I control whether I get out of the will of God or not. I don't care what they say. I don't care what kind of attack come. I don't care what people try to convince me. I control whether I get out of the will of God or not. I control that. So if I control that, then I can control what God is working in my life. Can't, persecution, can't, Paul said it. He said, what shall separate me from the love of God? What shall separate me from the love of God or from the will of God? Nothing. Now, there's some things that try, boy. It's like, man, I just want to quit. But no, I said, no, I can't. Where am I going to go? See, I'm, I'm leaving the very one that's protecting me. I'm leaving the very one who's a shield round and about me. I'm leaving the very one who can turn this thing, whole thing around. Watch it. See, and that's what the enemy does. He wants to attack you to the point that you get out of the will of God. They did that to you. You do that to them. Yeah, and step right and step right out of the will of God. You'll feel better by cussing them out, but now you're out of the will. You got another cuss coming. Are you following me? I control. That's why. That's why you got to manage your emotion. I don't listen. Can't nobody stop you from doing from getting what God has for you. Can't nobody stop you but you. Can't nobody stop you. I'm feeling violent tonight. <laughs> well, you, if you'd have heard of this testimony, you'd have been like, boy, shoot. I mean, just, it's just, just, just miraculous. Huh, babe? Yeah, just miraculous. Our God, our God does stuff like that. Can't nobody, see, see, the enemy, the enemy, a lot of times when he's, he's tempting, the temptation, whatever, you got to ask yourself, what's he really after? He ain't after you. He's after you disconnected from your help. He know he's no match for a child of God that loves God, that's pursuing God, that, that God is, is God steadily revealing. He's no match for that. So he's got to go, he's got to get you to disconnect. Can't nobody separate you from God. Can't nobody separate you out of the will of God. Don't you let anything, I don't care who it is, don't let your pastor, your parent, your spouse, your, your, your dog, don't let nobody separate you. I don't know, I don't know, it's, I know it's hard sometimes. I know it's tough sometimes. 
I know, I know, man, you're like, well, how long I got to, how long do I have to go through this? God, dog, this trial is long. Oh, my God. It just seems like it never, I must have done something wrong. Don't you, don't you, don't you let go of the will of God. Don't you let go. You keep doing that word. Because he's going to work that thing in. He's going to work it in. He's going to work it into your plan. And it's going to work for the watch this. And it's going to work for your good. It's not just going to be over. It's going to work for your good. Don't you quit on God. Keep doing the will of God. You keep on praying. You keep on loving. You keep on sowing. You keep on living right. You keep on doing. When you mess up, get your butt up and keep on moving. See, that's the will of God. That you repent and keep on going. That's the will of God. We all gonna mess up. We all gonna make mistakes. Mistakes, mistakes are good. There's nothing that humbles you. Like a little like a little failure. There's nothing that humbles you like a little failure. Because just when you thought you was all that. That's the truth. That works in any, any, any realm. Business, whatever. That, and a little failure humbles you and brings your little hiney down. Like, wow. You ever, you ever get hit with something you're like, man, I thought I was past that. And that flesh crawled off the altar on you. I'm serious. You keep doing the will of God. You keep doing the will of God. He's going to work that thing out. You're good. Glory to God. <sighs> Shoot, man, we can shut that thing down right now, can't we? Next time you hear that scripture, see, he's our partner. And I'm in control whether or not I stay See, a lot of times people feel like, well, this is all going on. I must be out of the will of God. No, that could be proof positive that you're right in the center. <laughs> all right. Now, go over to Jesus. So there's some things working right now. Listen, let, let's take a little break. I mean, we're not going to go out to the bathroom, no. <laughs> Oh, this class, okay, break time. No, I don't mean it like that, but I want you to take a mental break. And I want you to, I want you to, I want you to make the adjustment, get right back into the will of God. Because some, some of y'all were just about to step out, like, man, this ain't even, this ain't, I'm, I'm sacrificing this, this ain't even worth it. Some of y'all, man, I'm living right and all that. What, what good am I? Look at, look at, look at this heifer over here. She ain't, she ain't, she ain't, I mean, look at this person over here. She ain't. She ain't living right. Look, look at that. It's true what you're saying, Look at him. He ain't. Look at him. He, he, uh, he ain't even treating his wife right. And look, he look. He getting promotion. I know what he doing. You know. And then we 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 get you know look look. Look, God, I'm going to church every morning at 8 30, and them fools, they sitting up there, they look, they start looking at me drinking their coffee, talking about. <laughs> they sitting up drinking their coffee, and I'm, I'm, I got to wake up early and go down there, and, and when the snow, I got to slide across the parking lot, and I got to get in there. And then the devil, the devil will put in your head, you're doing all that. And you can still barely put gas in your car. Yeah. What the use? What the what the what the what the what the well you say it's something else, but what the use? Why are you doing all that? You standing, you you standing, you standing. Look, ain't nobody standing with you, you standing by yourself. So look, where where you where you anyway. I don't care what he says. Now I remember what I told you a minute ago. We 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 we've been through all that. And so we so far past, we're so glad that we stood right there in the will of God. And that's why we so tight because there was time it wasn't nobody to stand with us but us. Even the folks we love was criticizing us and saying we, you know, we were cuckoo for Cocoa Puff. <laughs> Man, they bleed. What's wrong? What happened to that friendly in them? Man, he ain't got Deb all caught up in that mess. <laughs> that's, why, that's, why, that's why we're so passionate because 
if you can get past that, and that's why God raised up people, and you know, hopefully y'all can believe us, that say, listen, man, I know, just, just, just hold the course. Just stay steady. And keep on, keep on. You don't have to be fast. Just be steady. Just be consistent. And them hard days, listen, them hard days, you're like, man, I, I, I don't want to pray. pray. Just sit there, just sit there, just sit there before the Lord. Lord, okay, you, I'm here. You, you got to do the talking today. <laughs> I don't know how many times I say, Lord, there it is. See, this is all I got. I made it. I'm serious. I told you a minute ago, God looks at your heart. You don't have to have all the words. Forget all the words. I remember the time I was trying to pray like them deacons. I was, I was writing down what they said. Down on your bending knee and all that. I was trying to pray. I thought that's how you had to pray. And I'm writing. I'm making notes while they praying. And I'm going home. I have a father. <laughs> you know. I, that boy crazy. Who else did that? Anybody else did that? Yeah, see, that's like, what I'm saying. Y'all know y'all did that. I'm like, okay, the Deacon, Deacon Henry, boy, he can pray. I said, who, 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 who Deacon in the day? Is Deacon Henry? Oh, I'm going to take note today. But listen. Listen. All you that like, oh, Pastor, I don't, I don't, I don't do it. I, I'm not as fluent. I'm not as fluent, and forget all that. Just talk to him. But make this your quest. God, I want to know what your will is for my life. You know, I mean, from 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 your employment place to your to your, you know, how how to how to how to make adjustments with your children. To, to your finances, to your to your health, Lord, what's what's up? What's, can you give me give me a um, give me a regimen? Give me give me some information. It's amazing how that. See, when you're in the center of His will, everything everything there. Now, it, it ain't it's not going to happen overnight, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen. All right, man, I must have been talking a long time because my thing went out. Okay, um. Okay. Now, when we're in the center of God's will, we can be certain he's working in us, with us, and through us. I want to give you a couple of scriptures on that. Um, Mark 16, and then Philippians 2. Glory to God. He's with us every step of the way. I said he's, we can be certain, and that's what I like to amplify, that we are sure. I am so, I can train myself now to think. Everything <laughs> go Everything I'm going through, you know, sometimes you get shaking, but then you just, you know, sit back and pause. Wait a minute. I ain't in there by myself. I ain't in there by myself. He's with me. So he's with us. Look in uh, verse 20. And they went out and preached where? Everywhere. And the Lord working with them and confirming the word through a company signs. So here we see, see, and it was the will of God. God, God told him to go preach. He said, y'all go preach. And Jesus told him that. And it says that he went working with them. If they didn't went, he would not have went with them. So they were in the will of God. And so he, he, he's always in this. When we're in the center of God's will, he's always laboring with us to bring to pass what he will for us to do. Look at Philippians chapter 2. He's working not just with us, but in us. Now, he says, for God is working where? Uh, 13. You know what's on the screen. <laughs> for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Good gracious alive. So, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you, what do you call me to do? Because, see, now, now what, what I'm supposed to do, you empower me. You empower me to do it now you're working with me and now you're working in me I'm never alone I, I'm as sure I'm as I am as certain as certain can be that God is with me God is with me right now talking sounds like me but it's God God is with me right now God is speaking to you God is speaking some things to you right now 
God is telling some of you, you know, you know that ain't the will of God. You know that ain't the will of God. You ain't had a, hadn't heard a voice from heaven, but something inside of you is scratching you. Like, why you keep, why you keep, why are you still involved with this? Disconnect. Yeah, because I asked him to talk to you. I want you to hear the word of God, but I want you to get a word from God. And see, that's what I pray when you come. You, you hear something I never even said. And so he's telling you, listen, the safest place for your life is in the center of the will. And whatever goes on, yeah, this is not going to stop anything from coming at you. But everything that comes at you, we're going to catch it. When you get a little break, you're going to take it out. Use it. Use it. Use it. And some of it, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a myriad of things, but it, it causes, when, when something happens to you and God takes that thing and turns it around, it brings a confidence and a boldness that you can't get at any etiquette school. Any charm school can't teach you that. It's, it's a supernatural thing that you're like, wow. And, and it's, so, it's so powerful that people will hear you talk and they'll be encouraged to move on in their life. Yes, sir. Ah, boy. Now, let me take you one last place. No, two last places. Glory to God. I know this is, this is quite simple. But see, we have to, we're talking about trusting God. See, I've got to trust God that his will is the best thing for me. But not only that, but that's when I really get to know him. When at least I desire his will, just desire it. And get sensitive to him. Like, okay. I think I told you, I don't know, a couple months ago, get in the habit of, of asking the Lord, Lord, is there anything you want me to do today? You want me to run any errands for you? you want to cast out some devils? Or... Yeah. Hallelujah. And sometimes he'll say, well, I need you to, I need you to pray. Um, you know, your, your, your children over there fighting. So I want you to you pray for them. They're trying to work out. I'm, I ain't talking about, I'm just using this as an example. Your, your, your children over there fighting and you know, trying to be married, and uh, you know they 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 both ready to just 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 shut the door on this thing. They only been married two weeks, but you know they they're like, oh, I thought marriage was gonna be easier than this. Okay, let's go. Yeah, and that may be your errand. See, the will of God is not okay. Well, I'm I'm gonna go be a preacher. No, the will of God is whatever He asks you to do for that given time. Yeah, I, I heard the, um, somebody was telling me, what was that, some, telling me something today about, what was that the staff meeting somebody was telling me? I don't know. Um, this lady, this, this lady, oh, these guys, the two preachers were at lunch, and the one preacher told the other one, he said, man, I really, God want me to get this lady, you know, give her some change. She said, oh, okay. He said, how much? $83.19. He said, why don't you just give her a hundred? Is that even what God said? He said, he's told me to give her $83.19. He said, well, where are you going to get changed? He said, well, she can break it. I mean, just give it a hundred. Quick, because you're being cheap now. See, you know, God always, you know, what God wants you, God never do below, but he always do more. How many of y'all said that before? I have. And he said, no. He said, he said I don't know, man. I'm going to give her $83. So he gave her $83.19. The woman almost passed out. She said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. The preacher said, what? He said, I got an electric bill, and I did not know how I was going to pay it. He said, well, how much is it? $83.19. Okay. And, and, and he, he said, well, that was God. She said, it sure was. <laughs> Sat down there, got the woman born again, got 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 a filled with the Holy Spirit, cause cause she knew that had to be God for somebody she don't know to give her eighty three dollars and nineteen cents. 
And so sometimes God, God will just encourage you, you know, buy the gas for it. I know you're pumping, you're pumping, your gas bill is only $15 and there's a $20. Go ahead and pay, go ahead and pay for it. <laughs> That's the will of God. God will move on you to do stuff like that. God will say, I want you to just do me a favor. No. Now, I want to take you one last place, okay? Hallelujah. No, I want to take you to uh, Mark chapter 10 first. Then we're going to go. We'll close it out with, with, with Joby. Job. Mark now. We're going to go to Job later. Mark chapter 10. Now, when you know you're in the will of God, <laughs> when you know you're in the will of God, how many of you, you know, how many of you, you, you know you're in the will of God right now? You, you're in the will of God. You're in the will of God. Okay, that ain't enough hands. But anyway, I'll take what I can get. <laughs> no, because this is where your, this is where your peace is. This is where your power is. This is where, because see, see, I'm going to talk about the Sunday. See, a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all ain't getting out the nest. Cause, cause you like I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to stir nothing up. And God is, God is pushing you, not is leading you. You know, like I talked to, I talked to, oh this lady, she told me, she said she was here last Wednesday, and she said after that message she went and <laughs> she told her job, I'm done. Yeah, you know I ain't trying to get nobody to quit their job, <laughs> but she that thing hit her so much, she's like you know what I don't know why am I even I, I no. But see, there's a lot of people. See, they won't even get out the nest. They won't even try to get out the nest. Because it's, 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 it's comfortable and it's going to require something else of me. But that's God. That's what God is. Because it will require something else of you that you don't have, not familiar with, but God can say, that's what I want to do. I want to, you to fly like an eagle into the future. Yeah. See, God is trying to get you to fly, and you're still in that nest. You know, I like what your husband said. You know, her husband, he, he get ready to retire. Did he retire yet? He's still going to wait till December? Yeah. End of the month now. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was in the, the point. Well, oh, anyway, I ain't going to tell his business. But he was here Wednesday. He said, man, that's me. I'm sitting in here. I'm sitting in that nest. He said, I don't know why I'm working. Because he told me what he was doing. I said, well, well, you, you, you just giving them money. And you could be enjoying your retirement. And he said, yeah, I'm just so comfortable. Don't tell him I talked about it. <laughs> but, because she was just retired. She just retired the other day. And he said, yeah, I said, here, and then she's still in the bed. I said, I said, because she come to pass, she come here past the friendly. She got sent. No, I just play. I didn't say that. But, but see, see, part of the will of God, God will, God will edge. Oh, man. Can I just talk about this for a minute? Because, See, a lot of times you don't you don't know what to do, and God is always going to. This is some Sunday stuff. God is always going to require you to step where you don't know. I call it the the transition zone. That's when you really don't know what's ahead of you, but you know you can't go backwards. I call y'all like that. Yeah, I, I, I call it. I got another name for it. I call it the hallway. That door closed and that one ain't open. And see, but see, a lot of you in there, and, and God said, well, if you will trust me, you will trust me. And you say, and see, God, I'll tell you what her husband said. She said her, her husband told me her good friend would, could retire, and he retired. He collected two, two checks, right? He collected two retirement checks. Now he gone. Worked 30 something, 40 something years. And he died. And he's like, Okay, it's time to retire. Now. <laughs> but see, well, but see, some, some of you, some of you, some of you, you may not be ready to retire, but, but God is like, I need you, I, I got something for you over here. I got something for you over here. And then you know what happens? A lot of times, we don't make moves that God is asking us to move. And then until something gets stirred up, somebody get mad, we overstay, we stay too long, and then somebody... You ever do that? I've done that. I'm like, dog, I should have had my butt out of here a long time ago. See, I wouldn't be going through all this crap if I'm just, just so bad. You know, now you're mad at somebody. They're mad at you. And, and now, now you lost a friend, whatever. But, but God will always require you. Uh, trust me, we've we, been doing this a long time. He will always require you 
to take a step of faith. I read something the other day. He said, it's not discussion, it's not conversation, it's not anything but action that spells F-A-I-T-H. Because, like I said, sometimes we be lying to ourselves with our own conversation. Do you know you can talk about something so long that you can convince yourself that you're doing this? Okay, I take it off. Where was that going? March 10th, thank you. That was good, though. But we're going to talk more about that on Sunday. We're going to get some folks out the nest. We're going to empty the nest. We're going to empty that joker. I'm thinking maybe I can get somebody to build me a nest Sunday. <laughs> and you know what? I, uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, you know what? Okay. When you know you're in the will of God, do your best to look at it from God's perspective. Look at your challenges from God's perspective. Here's God's perspective. Jesus looked at them and said, with men, it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, when you're in the will of God, nothing will be able to stop you. I counsel myself with that all the time. Friendly, nothing can stop you if you quit. You quit. You gotta, you gotta trust in God's timing for your life. Trust in God's goodness for your life. Trust in God's mercy for your life. Trust in God's favor in your life. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Trust in God's goodness. And you will never, ever be stopped. Because with God, how many things? Okay. Now, let's wrap it up. Go to Job 42, please. Whew. Hallelujah. How many of you know Job had an extraordinary, extraordinary, extraordinary chain of events? No. Um, but he also had extraordinary accomplishments and restoration. Look at verse 10. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Isn't that wonderful? Look at verse 12. Now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. Look at verse 16. After this, Job lived 140 years. Now, if that was somebody stressed out, they wouldn't have been living after all of that. No 140 40 more years. Watch this. Glory to God. And he saw his children and his grandchildren for four generations. How many know that's a blessing to see your children and your grandchildren? You know, like a lot of folks want to talk about the donkeys and, and Bentleys and all that, but he, I like the fact he saw his children cheering. And then one place that his daughters, they were the finest, finest girls in the whole land. I don't know if that was a blessing for him because he probably had to shoot a lot of guys. <laughs> <laughs> at, least, at least he threatened them probably. But then, so, so watch this, though, verse 17. So Job died old and full of days. Now he was old, was old, whatever that was, and then full of days, which meant that he 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 did he didn't he didn't whimper out of here. He went out here long, he was in there long and what? Strong. Okay. Now I just want to look at the pre restored Job. What kind of attitude did Job have? I think Job came to the lighthouse one night and heard Pastor Friendly talking about, may God be for you. Mm. <laughs> All right, Steve, don't, don't instigate over there. All right, look at verse 1. Then Job answered the Lord and said, 
I know that you can do what? Everything. And that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. Job knew that nothing can stop what God had purpose for his life. <laughs> he was going through all of that. But he knew, God, you said this about me. You said all things will work together for my good. You said if God be for me, who can be against me? You said you would bless the works of my hand. You said you would bless my family. You would bless me coming and you would bless me going. You say a thousand may fall on my side and ten thousand on my right hand. But it will not come near me. You said, I know I went through a lot of stuff. I know there's a lot of things. And I, I, some stuff got away from me. I lost some stuff. But God, you're not done with me. I said, God, you're not done with me. Some of you sitting here tonight and there's some things that happen in your life and some things not so cool in your life. I got an announcement. God ain't done with you. I said, God is not done with you. If he purposed it, it's got to come to pass. If he said it, it's got to happen. It's got to happen. He just needs you. Remember, Job said, Job said to his wife, his wife tries to say, are you going to maintain your integrity? Are you, let me show, where's that at? That's in, um, that's in, um, that's in Job 13. Look at, give me Job 13. Uh, give me Job 13, 15, and then give me Job 2, 9. Glory to God. See, you never lose with God. I said, you never lose with God. Job said, uh-uh, uh-uh, can't nothing stop this. Yes, I lost some stuff, but I am not losing. Look in uh, Job 13, 15, said, though he what? Yet will I what? Even so, I will defend my own ways before him. So he said, you know, I don't even know what's all happening to me, but I'm still going to trust God. Yeah. Now, I got anybody here tonight that's going to still trust God. Yeah. All right. Now, now, now look, at, look at this one. Come on, Kelly. Look at, verse, uh, look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. Job 2, 9. Then his wife said to him, do you still hold fast to your integrity? Listen, all, basically all this is in the middle. All this stuff going on. Why don't you curse God and die? But he said to her, you speak as one of the foolish women speak. Shall we indeed accept good from God and shall we not accept adversity? In all this, Job did not sin with his mouth. He did not talk about why is this happening to me? Why am I going through all of this? God, listen, 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 stand up everybody. God purposed some things for your life. Listen, there's going to be some stuff happening in the next 10 days in your life. All because you're like, what? I'm in the will of God. Yes. I'm in the will of God. This is supposed to happen to me. This good thing is supposed to happen to me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Here we go. I'll hear what I want you to do. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you know, I mean, you know. You may not be doing everything perfect, but you know you're in the will of God right now. Well, one thing about being in the will of God is being in this building right now. What God has purposed for you, say this with me. What God has purposed for me, God has purposed for me must, must come to pass. Come to pass. Nothing, Nothing can ever, can ever stop. What God, what God had planned for me, has laid up for me, and what he had purposed for me. Say this with me. Devil, Devil listen, up. listen up. You are, you are a non-factor. Non In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I, rebuke, I rebuke, I push back, I, push back, I cancel, I cancel all of your plans against me, against my family, against my finances, against my body, in the name of Jesus. I've been through some stuff. Yes, I've been through some stuff. But I found out tonight that it is working together for my good. It's about to get good up in here right now. I'm going to praise God because my good is manifesting right now. Come on, now I want you to give God a shout of praise right now. It's working. It's working. Come on, it's working for your good. You cannot be stopped. The devil can't stop you. Circumstances can't stop you. Listen, 
I know it's been hard, but I want you to get back in the game. I know it's been painful, but I want you to get back in the game. I know some stuff got away from you, and it looked like it's over, but I want you to know, no, it's just overtime. That's what it is. It's overtime. God. God brought you here tonight to let you know the best is yet to come. Get in the will of God. See, the Bible said, what's the will of God? One of the things, one of the things that exactly the will of God is to be ever thankful. I'm telling you, some of the hardest things I've ever done came, came to pass with a mouth of thanksgiving and praise. And here's what I want us to do. All that pain you have, all the sorrow you have, those sleepless nights, where that voice, you know, where that something says, told you, you are a failure. You are wasting your time. Why are you staying with him? Why are you staying with her? Listen, why don't you look at your friends? They're not having the struggles you're having. That's because one of the reasons is, see, see, people that don't have issues with the devil is because they're walking in the same direction. People that have conflict is because they're busting the devil's head and they're going into the devil's camp and taking back what the enemy stole. So I want you tonight, if God restored Job double, God is, we have a better covenant and God is willing to restore you. I'm talking about your dignity. I'm, some of it may be material, but some of it is just getting your joy back. Some of it is just getting your dignity back. But one thing for sure, God is not a man that he should lie. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you tonight. Father, for every pain, for every humiliation, for every embarrassment, we claim a sevenfold return. We have caught the thief tonight. We know who the thief is. And we know it is your will, it is your will to act like in this place even tonight to act like it's all good now I want you to <laughs> I want you to picture something get in, your, get in your crosshair the goodness of God in your life I don't care whatever the, the toughest situation listen he's turning it around if you're in the will of God get in the will of God right now say Lord if you're here tonight and you're not born again the will of God for you is to be born again Give your life to Jesus tonight. Give your life to him. Just say, Lord, I receive everything you've done for me. Let's go ahead and do that right where you are. Just, I, Lord, I receive everything you've done for me. Come into my life. Yeah, because we get ready to release something in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Father, some of us have children that need to find their way. Help us. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Lord, some of us have some issues on the job that, that just, I hate to go there now. It's just, a, it's just a hard place to go. In Jesus' name. Father, for those that need to come out of the nest, the will of God, the will of God is for you to step out. You're going to step out. Even tonight, you're going to get some wisdom and some insight. The will of God. But here's how we're going to do it. I want you to thank God for his wisdom that he gave you tonight. Come on, let's, let's just thank God. Begin to thank God for what we just heard. Lord, we thank you for the wisdom. We thank you for understanding. We thank you, Lord, the, for the strength that came from that word. We thank you for confirming your word with signs following in our lives. We thank you for it, Father. We thank you for it leading us and guiding us into all truth. We thank you even now, Lord. We thank you even now, Lord. We thank you even now. We thank you now. We thank you for the answers that are manifesting. We thank you right now, Father. We thank you right now. We're grateful. We thank you. Yes, we're thankful. Come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your Thank him for his wisdom. Thank him for his counsel. Thank you. He's watching over his word to perform it. He's performing his word in your life right now. Thanksgiving opens the door for performance. Thank you, Jesus.
My days of waiting are over. My days of struggle are over. My days of dissatisfaction inside are over. My days, glory to God, of hurting are over. I know what to do now. Lord, we thank you. 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 Thank you, Jesus. All things are working together for my good. It's working for my good right now. I don't care what I feel. I know it's working for my good. It's working for my good. All things are possible to him that believes. With God, all things are possible. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. Come on, say it with me. It's not over. It's not over. One more time. It's not over. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. It's not over. It's not over. Father, we do thank you that it is not over. Everything, everything we deal with, everything we've dealt with, everything we go through, everything we've gone through, is working together. It's a concentrated, intensive class. And we're coming through with flying colors tonight. Thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Awesome are you, Lord. Awesome are you, Lord. Yeah, we just internalize it. You can go ahead and be.